The Book of the Prophet Jeremiah, Chapter 18. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. And I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it? If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. God's talking about repenting now. And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. If it do evil in my sight that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. Now therefore go to speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you and devise a device against you. Return ye now every one from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. And they said, There is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices, and we will, every one, do the imagination of his evil heart. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Ask ye now among the heathen, Who hath heard such things? The virgin of Israel hath done a very, a very horrible thing. Will a man leave the snow of Lebanon, which cometh from the rock of the field? Or shall the cold flowing waters that cometh from another place be forsaken? Because my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity, and they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths, to walk in paths in a way not cast up, to make their land desolate and a perpetual hissing. Everyone that passeth thereby shall be astonished and wag his head. I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. I will shew them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. Then said they, Come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah, for the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come and let us smite him with the tongue, and let us not give heed to any of his words. Give heed to me, O Lord, and hearken to the voice of them that contend with me. Shall evil be recompensed for good, for they have digged a pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them and to turn away thy wrath from them. So, <laughs> he's, he tried to protect them and now they want to kill him. Therefore, deliver up their children to the famine and pour out their blood by the force of the sword and let their wives be bereaved of their children and be widows and let their men be put to death let their young men be slain by the sword in battle. Let a cry be heard from their houses when thou shalt bring a troop suddenly upon them, for they have digged a pit to take me and hid snares for my feet. 
Yet, Lord, thou knowest all their counsel against me to slay me. Forgive not their iniquity, neither blot out their sin from thy sight. But let them be overthrown before thee. Deal thus with them in the time of thine anger. Does that sound like, that's the end. Does that sound like he's a crying prophet? A weeping prophet? No. Let's go back, right? So he wakes up one day. The Lord's like, um, yeah, I'm going to use you. Go over here. And he's like, <sighs> Lord's like, do not be dismayed at their faces. We haven't had any problem with that. He's been doing everything he's been asked to. And at this point, yeah, they're just trying to kill him now. They're like, oh, yeah, we wanna, we're want we going to smite him with the tongue. Well, that just seems like they're just going to say horrible things to him. But now they've digged a pit for his soul. Now he's realizing that. And he says, yeah, you know, I came and I stood up for them. I spoke for them. I asked for help for them. And now they want to kill him. And so now he's like, you know what? Guess what? This last verse, um, Lord, you know, all of them are against me to kill me, right? Yet, Lord, thou knowest all their counsel against me to slay me. He says, you know what? Don't, don't forgive them anything. Don't forgive. Don't blot out their sins. Don't forgive their iniquity. Let them be overthrown before you. Deal with them that way. I'm on your side. They're, they're just horrible. They're intractable. Forget it. I don't want to help them. Because they're trying to kill him now. I just read somewhere that someone cut Isaiah in two. I think we'll read about it in the New Testament. But, um... Mm, I'm not sure. I think it. I think it was a, an Israelite. It wasn't even like an Assyrian. I'm not sure because they hated their own prophets. They didn't want to hear it. They want to keep sin sinning. They don't want to hear that um, they're not following God. They're not thinking about Him. That they're only after their own heart. Their minds are constantly on evil. Okay, let's see what happens. Chapter 19. Thus saith the Lord. Go and get a potter's earthen bottle and take of the ancients of the people and of the ancients of the priests and go forth unto the valley of the son of Hinnom. Remember that? That's not a good place, right? That's where Topeth in like Gehenna are, right? Because I just read that. That's what I remember. Which is by the entry of the east gate. And proclaim there the words that I shall tell thee, and say, Hear ye the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah, and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, the which whosoever heareth his ears shall tingle. Because they have forsaken me, and have estranged this place, and have burned incense in it unto other gods, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, nor the kings of Judah, and have filled this place with the blood of innocents. They have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with the fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spake it, neither came it into my mind. So God didn't tell anybody to go burning all this stuff and sacrificing their children to Baal. This is their idea. And you know what? Their priests are telling them to do that, actually, probably. Therefore, so it's just systematic, systemic, just um, complete corruption. No, there's, they have no guidance whatsoever. There's nobody um, doing anything right. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that this place shall nowhere be called Tophet, Wait, where did it just say?
Or did it just, okay, the second verse, go forth into the, the valley of the son of Hinnom. Okay, six. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that this place shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. So we, we just did read this in a couple chapters ago. And I will make void the counsel of Judah and Jerusalem in this place, and I will cause them to fall by the sword before their enemies, and by the hand of them that seek their lives, and their carcasses will I give to be meat for the fowls of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth. And I will make the city desolate and, and hissing. Everyone that passeth thereby shall be astonished and hiss because of all the plagues thereof. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters, and they shall eat every one the flesh of his friend in the siege and straightness, wherewith their enemies that they shall seek lives shall straighten them. Then shalt thou break the bottle in the sight of the men that go with thee, and shall say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Even so will I break this people and this city as one breaketh a potter's vessel that cannot be made whole again, and they shall bury them in Tophet, till there be no place to bury. Thus will I do unto this place, saith the Lord, and to the inhabitants thereof, and even make this city as Tophet. In the houses of Jerusalem, the houses of the kings of Judah shall be defiled as the place of Tophet. So, this Tophet is a place where it's so, it's a complete graveyard, and it's, it's a plague, and it's diseased, and they said there's just, you can't even bury anybody there, it's just bodies upon bodies upon bodies, it's just like piled up, and he says, I'm going to go ahead and make um, Jerusalem like Tophet. Because of all the houses upon whose roots they have burned incense unto all the host of heaven and have poured out drink offerings unto other gods. Then came Jeremiah from Tophet, whither the Lord had sent him to prophesy, and he stood in the court of the Lord's house and said to all the people, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will bring upon this city and upon all her towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks, that they might not hear my words.